receiving a telephone call from my mother-in-law late one night. And she informed me that my wife, sister, and husband had been involved in a tragic car accident. They had been on a way to a ski vacation in Colorado when their van was broadsided by an 18-wheeler. At that time, four young boys in the van, and Jeremy, the oldest, who was soon to be nine at the time, was killed instantly. The other three were all seriously injured. And I remember feeling so helpless when I heard the news that night, not knowing what to say to Susan and Craig. They're here tonight, by the way, sitting right down in the second row with Jason, Joel, and John Mark. And I felt like I didn't want to say something religious to Craig because he knew all the scriptures, the Bible teacher in his church. And I had to get on the airplane the next day and fly to another city. And as I was sitting on the airplane, I remember reading from Isaiah 43, how the Lord will make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And God gave me the words to this song. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. That's what I really wanted to say to Susan and Craig. God's working in ways you can't see. I wanted to give them a hope in a hopeless situation. He's working in ways you can't see. And you may be here tonight. You may or may not have gone through a situation like Susan and Craig. But you feel that God has forgotten you. I want to tell you something that God has inscribed you in the palm of his hand. And he is able to make a way tonight where there seems to be no way. Would you sing it with me one more time? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. son Marshall was born seven weeks premature. For months we struggled with the wires and beeping of a heart monitor while I became more and more convinced that our son was not developing normally. Although many people tried to assure me that I was being an over-anxious mother, 
We soon found ourselves in the, do in the offices of various doctors and specialists. And yet, through all this, we can look back and see God's hand upon us, leading us and working on that eternal part of our being that is more important to him than even our temporary earthly circumstances. He has made a way for us through his peaceful, comforting voice in the two quiet nights when the whys and the what-ifs creep into our thoughts. He's made a way through the help and the gifts and the tears and the prayers of the members of the body of Christ. A year and a half ago, doctors informed us that Marshall's progress looked too good to be the suspected metabolic disorder. A second MRI revealed cerebral palsy, which is damage to the brain, resulting in abnormal muscle tone and control. Although Marshall's progress in motor skills may seem slow and his delays very pronounced, small miracles continually remind us of God's hand at work. Therapists have told us they never thought he would walk with a walker, nor speak as clearly as he does. And last January, our most fervent prayer was answered when we saw Marshall give his heart to Jesus. It would be impossible to describe all the changes and the good that God has brought to myself, Kurt, Macy, and others through Marshall. Only if you have lived through an experience in which you have allowed God to change you for the better can you understand when I say to you that we would not go back to what we were before for a hundred trouble-free lives. We know that God is in control of our everyday experiences. He wants so much more for us than that which a carefree existence can produce. We have learned that we are God's servants. He is not ours. And we now know that we can stand and say with the three Hebrew children who were faced with a fiery furnace, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. But if not, still, we will bow down to no other God. God will make a way. Amen. Hey.